Alabama is certainly a premier head coaching destination, but I tell you why Steve Sarkeesian should and likely will stay at the University of Texas. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started on today's episode of locked on longhorns there is a head coaching vacancy at the university of alabama not sure if you've heard and steve sarkeesian has been connected to that vacancy but i tell you why he should and likely will stay at the university of texas in the second segment quinn ewers has announced his intention to return to the university of texas for the 2024 season and forego the nfl draft what does that mean for quinn ewers himself and his texas football program heading into the sec in 2024 and in the last segment texas defensive line coach bo davis is returning to his alma mater as the lsu defensive line coach leaving a huge vacancy at the 40 acres we discuss all of that and more on today's episode of locked on longhorns part of the locked on podcast network your team every day so there were a lot of fan bases <laughs> that ended up in a frenzy this week that did not expect to be in a frenzy this week, right? They were largely chilling. And then we got the abrupt, you know, seismic news that Nick Saban, possibly the GOAT uh, of college football, would be coaching no longer and is retiring from coaching the University of Alabama, right? And you know that his replacement has to come from somewhere and he's likely going to come from a top-level program. So then a lot of fan bases, like I said, had that little knot in their stomach, like, please, not my coach, right? First, it was Dan Lanning. There were reports that he was in Tuscaloosa accepting the job. That wasn't true. He came out and said that he was not going to accept it. Of course, there was a lot of smoke for Lane Kiffin because he is a, a mentee of Nick Saban. He has always been seen as kind of the, you know, or one of the you know possible successors to Nick Saban if he was to step down. Um, there's still smoke at this point as me recording this at 8.30 a.m. Central that, you know, uh, Mike Norvell and Kalen DeBoer from Florida State and Washington, respectively, are leading candidates for the job. But another name that had been in connection and still is, connection, still is in connection with the Alabama vacancy as we speak is Steve Sarkeesian, right? Because he won a national championship as an offensive coordinator at Alabama and he is a mentee of Nick Saban. A lot of people felt like once Nick Saban stepped down, that Steve Sarkeesian would be one of the first people to get that call. And based on what he did at the University of Texas this year and over the last three years, he certainly should be one of Alabama's top candidates, right? And so because Alabama has not made a decision yet or Steve Sarkeesian has not came out and definitively announced that he's not going anywhere yet, you know, Texas fans have had that little pit in their stomach, like no way he would leave Texas after our best season in over a decade. Now, Last night, he did tweet and post on Instagram, it's a great day to be a Longhorn, and his wife, L'Oreal, did tweet Texas in all caps. So it would seem as though that either an extension has been agreed upon with a lot more money coming his way, or they're in the process of working on an extension with a lot more money coming his way. But I'll tell you why Steve Sarkeesian should and likely will stay at the University of Texas, and although... Alabama is a prestigious destination why he really shouldn't consider that opportunity at all when you look at what Steve Sarkeesian has been able to do the last three years he has built a program that currently is on an equal playing field with Alabama if it has not surpassed it right I know over the last 17 years under Nick Saban Alabama has six national championships right I know over the last decade Alabama has been a lot more successful than the University of Texas has, right? But if we're living in the moment, if we're talking about this year and projecting forward, Texas is on an equal playing field with Alabama, absolutely, if they have not already surpassed them. And when you look at Steve Sarkeesian, he already has a legacy at the University of Texas. He has built a legacy already at the University of Texas. Of course, there's unfinished business. Of course, he wants to add to it and continue to achieve at a high level at the University of Texas. But he will always be the coach that got Texas to the back, who got Texas back to the top of college football, right? He will be the coach that got Texas their first Big 12 championship since 2009 on the way out of the conference, right? He will be the coach that led Texas to their first college football playoff appearance ever, right? Best case scenario, all he can do at the University of Alabama is maintain what Nick Saban has already built, right? And you don't want to be the coach after the coach, right? Because it's going to be super lofty expectations that he's going to have to meet if he goes to the University of Alabama, right? And I know there's a lot of Cowboys fans listening. The best way I can put it in perspective is do you want to be Jimmy Johnson 
or do you want to be Barry Switzer? Because both won Super Bowls with the Cowboys, but Jimmy Johnson is revered as the legendary coach within that organization, not Barry Switzer, right? And so Steve Sarkeesian has that decision to make. Do you want to continue to stay at the University of Texas, build on the legacy you've already created and be Jimmy Johnson? Or do you want to go to the University of Alabama and hope, right, and hope you can maintain what Nick Saban built and be Barry Switzer? I think Steve Sarkeesian would prefer to be Jimmy Johnson at the University of Texas. If you look at the 2023 season, you already beat Alabama head to head. Both teams were 12 and two conference champions that made the college football playoffs. Both teams are members of the SEC. So that's not an appeal that Alabama has over Texas any longer. And if you look at the last three years under Nick Saban and Steve Sarkeesian, Texas has recruited at a similar level as Alabama. You can say Alabama has been a little bit better in terms of recruiting on the high school side, but Texas has out recruited Alabama in the transfer portal the last three years. So recruiting has been very similar under Steve Sarkeesian and Nick Saban. Kalen DeBoer going from Washington to Alabama makes sense because you can do things at Alabama that you just simply can't do at the University of Washington, even going to the Big Ten. Mike Norvell from Florida State to Alabama makes sense. One, just because they got slapped with all of those recruiting violations yesterday at Florida State. Poor Florida State. <laughs> it's just been all downhill since Jordan Travis got hurt. But you can achieve at a higher level at Alabama than you can at Florida State. There is nothing that you can do at the University of Alabama that can't be done at the University of Texas. Like they say, you don't upgrade from the University of Texas. The University of Texas is the upgrade. When you look at recruiting specifically, Austin, Texas is just a more premier destination than Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I could be biased, but more than likely, I'm just right, right? If you want to poll 500 recruits that have been to Tuscaloosa, Alabama and Austin, Texas, I'm sure they'll tell you the same thing, but it's no disrespect to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. It's just all the credit in the world to one of the dopest cities in the world in Austin, Texas. If we talk about, you know, Texas being a recruiting hotbed compared to Alabama, the stats are staggering, right? As of July 26, 2023, so these are the rankings going into the 2024 classes senior season. Some rankings have changed for certain players. Texas had 43 players ranked in the top 247 for 24-7 sports compared to 14 for Alabama. So in the top 247 players in the country, according to 24-7 sports, Texas had 43 of them. Alabama only had 14, not the teams, the states, right? The state of Texas had 53 blue chip players in the 2024 class. That's four and five star players. The state of Texas had 53 of them alone, right? Texas does not have to step foot in the state of Alabama to build a championship level program. But the coach at Alabama cannot build a championship level program without stepping in the state of Texas. There's levels to it, right? Steve Sarkeesian can win a championship at Texas by recruiting players in Texas to stay in Texas and play for Texas. When you look at NIL, Texas is not struggling to pay anybody NIL wise, and maybe Alabama isn't either, right? But Nick Saban on two different occasions has had to go in front of his boosters and make public comments against his peers to get more NIL support from his boosters, right? In the last two years, he has made comments about Barstool. He's made comments about Travis Hunter and Deion Sanders. He's made comments about the Miami basketball program. He's made comments about Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M. And that's not a good look, right? And it just doesn't seem like somebody who is secure in what they're able to do NIL-wise and who they're able to bring in with that NIL would have to go on a public platform and disparage other coaches for using NIL the right way, right? So it seems as though Texas is in a better position. This is from the outside looking in, but it seems as though Texas is in a better position NIL wise than Alabama is, right? Since the introduction of NIL, Texas has taken a step forward while Alabama has taken a step back. Now, some people will say Alabama taking a step back as a 12 and 2 conference champion, you know, SEC champion that went to the college football playoff. Yes, right? Because there was one point where undoubtedly Alabama was the premier program in college football. Now, Georgia has passed them. Michigan has passed them. And like I said, Texas is either on the same level as Alabama or they've passed them this year going into 2024 as well. And, you know, it's Alabama, it's Texas. So you would expect that both schools are going to have very talented rosters over the next few years. But when you look at it compared to Texas and Alabama, I think the biggest difference moving forward will be quarterback play, right? Like I said, both talent, I mean, both rosters will have a ton of talent on them. But if quarterback is the most important position, in football or on the football field, Texas certainly seems like they're set up for success long-term better than Alabama at that position. Texas had better quarterback play 
in 2023 than Alabama did because we had Quinn Ewers and they had Jalen Milrow. In 2024, Texas will have Quinn Ewers and Alabama will have Jalen Milrow. And then following Quinn Ewers, you have Arch Manning, Trey Owens, and KJ Lacey, who I think are all four quarterbacks that could lead Texas to a national championship. Now, some people would say if Steve Sarkeesian went to Alabama, there's a chance that these quarterbacks could follow him. Maybe, right? Quinn Ewers grew up wanting to play for the University of Texas. And I highly doubt that he decided to come back for one more year to then sit a year to have to transfer to Alabama to play for Steve Sarkeesian. That's not going to happen, right? Arch Manning grew up wanting to play for the University of Texas. It's not a foregone conclusion he'll follow Steve Sarkeesian. Trey Owens grew up wanting to play for the University of Texas. I doubt he would follow Steve Sarkeesian to Alabama. And KJ Lacey is from the state of Alabama, so maybe that's a different story. But, you know, you got to get through three quarterbacks to even get to him, right? So the fact of the matter is, is that for a long time, the grass has been greener in Tuscaloosa, Alabama than it has been in Austin, Texas. But as of right now, on January 12, 2024, that is not the case. And that is why Steve Sarkeesian should and likely will stay at the University of Texas and why he really shouldn't even consider moving on to Tuscaloosa to be Alabama's next head coach. A quick word from our sponsors, and we discuss Quinn Ewers returning for the 2024 season. Sorry about that. Hold on. <laughs> Today's episode of Locked On Longhorns is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. All in prices, excuse me, buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Game Time is obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats, find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater and more. With zone deals, you pick the section and Game Time picks the seats for big time savings and the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you. 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On for $20 off your purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, so we're talking about Quinn Ewers. He is returning for the 2024 season, and we all had a pretty good idea that Quinn Ewers would be returning for the 2024 season because we started to get that reporting um, about midway through this past season, right? And at one point, the reporting was there was a 90% chance that he would come back to the University of Texas. We also saw Malik Murphy transfer before the college football playoffs, so that kind of gave us more uh confidence that Quinn Ewers would be returning for the 2024 season and really all week we've been waiting on him to make his announcement but you know it is 2024 and so they got to come up with you know a fire graphic or video to announce that you know they're coming back they can't just say it right they have to you know put out some fire content and the video was dope and I think he um is you know, going to be auctioning off or selling a trading card where he signed and said, I'm coming back. So that should make a lot of money, whether it's for charity or for Quinn Ewers or for whoever. Right. You know, he certainly earned it. Um, and I think this is best case scenario. Right. Quinn Ewers returning uh, for both parties. Right. For him and for the University of Texas. When you look at Quinn Ewers, who now will be coming back to Texas, heading into the SEC um, as a year three quarterback for the Texas football program. If you looked at the 2024 draft. There were a lot of quarterbacks that are currently projected higher than Quinn Ewers, right? And so it seems as though Quinn Ewers would be in that range of being a second, possibly a third round pick. And he's way too talented for that. And he deserves better than that, right? Quinn Ewers should be a first round pick in the NFL draft. And the best way to ensure that or make that more likely is to come back for one more season. If you look at it currently, he's projected lower than Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix, and J.J. McCarthy. Most people have Quinn Ewers around the consensus quarterback five to seven, or that's the consensus, I should say, that Quinn Ewers is around quarterback five to seven, right? But if you look at it next year, if he has a better season and improved 
improves on some of the little things at the quarterback position. There's no doubt in my mind that he'll be a top two quarterback in the 2025 draft and should be a first round pick. So staying in college will likely make him millions more in the 2025 draft than it would have gotten him in the 2024 draft. And rather than rushing to get to the NFL to sit behind a quarterback and develop probably behind a quarterback that he's better than, it makes more sense to come back to the University of Texas, right? You get a nice little paycheck for coming back to the University of Texas and you get to compete for a championship at the University of Texas rather than sitting on the bench and dealing with the pressure of being the next franchise quarterback for that franchise, right? It also gives him another year of experience and development, you know, playing at the University of Texas and getting better rather than having to deal with the pressure of being an NFL franchise quarterback or, you know, being one hit away or, you know, anything from having to start for an NFL franchise next year. And I think it's also, you know, the best case scenario for the Texas Longhorns, right? I think you would have been good at the quarterback position either way when your two options are Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning, but you can't understate how valuable it would be for this Texas football program to go into year one in the SEC with a veteran signal caller who is in year three at quarterback in Quinn Ewers. I also think, and I've said this on the podcast a few times, but I'll reiterate the point right now, that this is a huge prove it year for the Texas Longhorns and Steve Sarkeesian. Now, some Texas fans will say prove it year, (laughs) right? What? Like coming off the best season in over a decade from Steve Sarkeesian. But the reason I say that is because I think a lot of people, and you know, you could say that they don't matter, right? But naysayers and certain media members will be under the assumption that Texas was able to do what it did in 2023 because they were in a weak Big 12. Right. And they had a ton of talent that has now, you know, decided to move on to the NFL. Right. So a lot of people are going to come into next season saying that what we did was only because we were in the Big 12 and we're going to take a step back in the SEC. Right. And you don't want to prove the naysayers and those media members right by taking a step back going into the SEC next year. Also, recruiting is all about perception. Right. And perception is reality. If Texas goes into the SEC next year and falls flat on their face or takes a huge step back, will recruits still have the confidence in what Steve Sarkeesian is building to come to the University of Texas at the rate that they have over the last three years? Right. You don't want a scenario in which you go into the SEC next year and everybody says, oh, yep, Texas was a fluke in 2023. We knew they wouldn't be ready to compete at a high level in the SEC. Right. So I think there's a lot of pressure on Steve Sarkeesian and this Texas football program to go into the SEC next year and hold their own, right? Amidst a very tough schedule, you're going to Michigan on the road. I know they're not an SEC team, but that's still going to count towards your record, right? And then you're playing against Georgia. uh, You're playing against Texas A&M on the road. You're playing against Oklahoma. You're playing against uh, Arkansas on the road. So definitely a lot of pressure to, like I said, play at a high level next year in the SEC. As talented as Arch Manning is, right, I think you would be asking a lot of him as a red shirt freshman making his first real starts to maintain what you were able to do in 2023 in 2024 when his group of pass catchers at tight end and wide receiver really have no returning production, right? And so that's just a big ask, like I said, for Arch Manning getting his first real college football action to have a really good year for the Texas Longhorns in the SEC in his first year. Also, when you talk about those pass catchers in terms of tight end and wide receiver that don't have a turn a ton of experience or production, especially in a Texas jersey, Quinn Ewers in year three with more improvement should be a leader on this football team. He should be one of the best quarterbacks in college football. And if he's a leader and one of the best quarterbacks in college football, then he should be able to elevate those weapons around him, right? Over the last two years, Quinn Ewers has had the luxury of being able to turn around and hand the ball off to three NFL running backs in Jonathan Brooks, uh, B. John Robinson, and Roshan Johnson, right? Over the last two years, he's had the luxury of throwing to NFL pass catchers in Jatavian Sanders, Jordan Whittington, Adonai Mitchell, and Xavier Worthy, right? And so you could say that the talent around him has elevated Quinn Ewers going into the 2024 season. Quinn Ewers is going to have to elevate the talent around him, right? Jonte Cook, DeAndre Moore, Ryan Wingo, Gunnar Helm, Matthew Golden, whoever, right? Steve Sarkeesian trusts in the wide receiver rotation next year are going to have to be better 
This passing game is going to have to be better because we have Quinn Ewers at the helm. He's going to be a leader and a better quarterback in going into 2024 and hopefully a quarterback that can elevate the talent around him and that we're going to win games because of in the 2024 season. Texas has a championship level team going into next year in the SEC and the ceiling of this team is just higher with Quinn Ewers right now than it is with Arch Manning. A quick word from our sponsors and then we get into Bo Davis heading back to his alma mater in LSU. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same game parlays, find bets in the new Explore tab, make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, the official partner of the National Football League. So speaking of, you know, <laughs> fan base being in a frenzy this week and having their pit in their stomach, you know, we're all focused on Steve Sarkeesian right now and what decision he's going to make. But another reason that this fan base has been down is because we lost Bo Davis, right? And that's a huge loss at a, a huge position of need, right? We saw how well our defensive tackles played this year, really over the last two years, and a ton of credit for that has to go to Bo Davis. And now he's moving on to his alma mater and LSU to, you know, serve in the same role, right, in the same position. And he did get a raise. I know he was making a million a year at the University of Texas. It seems like now he's going to be making $1.25 million per year, and that's going to escalate per season, right? So he starts off with a $250,000 raise per year, and as long as he stays at, you know, LSU, that's going to continue to improve year after year. Also, there's the emotional connection of being able to go home, go back to your alma mater, and for his sake, you know, hopefully lead LSU back to being one of the top programs in college football. And, you know, I hope he has success at LSU. Obviously not when we play them. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want Texas to be LSU every time we play. But outside of that, Bo Davis has been a lot to this program, and I hope he finds success, you know, at LSU. Um Personally, right, I should say, and continues to find success in college football at LSU, right? And also, there's a rumor that, you know, his son being able to transfer to LSU and play and him being able to coach his son was a huge factor. Now, the reporting I saw said that his son would be able to come to the University of Texas in May. I'm sure it's more immediate at LSU. I'm not sure if him not being able to coach his son in spring ball would be such a huge factor that he would leave the University of Texas and go to LSU, but Nonetheless, the decision has already been made and he's gone, right? Whatever whatever the biggest factor was, however you want to rank those three things I just said, nonetheless, right, it was enough to get him to go to LSU. So, you know, like I said, uh, best of luck to him whenever he's not playing Texas, right? And that's a huge loss for Texas that we have to figure out in the midst of, you know, determining if Steve Sarkeesian will be our forever head coach, right? We've been able to make great hires and replace, you know, running back coach. Uh, Tashara Choice has been a home run hire. Chris Jackson replacing Brennan Marion has been a really good wide receiver coach this year. And linebacker coach, Coach Nansen, I think will do a really good job of replacing Jeff Choate, who is a really good linebacker coach and recruiter for us over the last couple of years. But I think replacing Bo Davis is a tougher task, in my opinion. I think this is the first big blow to the coaching staff in the Steve Sarkeesian era, right? You know, I think you'll be hard pressed to find a coach out there on the market that is more accomplished and more esteemed than uh, Bo Davis or could step in right away. And you could say, I think we upgraded at that coaching position over Bo Davis, right? I just don't know if that person is out there and he's available right now, but that remains to be seen, right? Development wise over the last two years, Keandre Coburn, Moro Ojimo, Tamandre Sweat, and Byron Murphy have all played their best football under Bo Davis, right? All four of these players have increased their draft stock after working with Bo Davis, right? They're all getting or got more NFL draft buzz than we had anticipated they would ever get before working with Bo Davis or playing, you know, full-time reps or snaps under Bo Davis, right? And when you look at Byron Murphy and Tavondre Sweat, both All-Americans this year, both first team all Big 12, right? Defensive lineman of the year in the conference in terms of Byron Murphy, defensive player of the year outright in the conference in terms of Tavondre Sweat. Once again, uh Bo Davis <laughs> deserves a ton of credit for that, right? Now, recruiting was a question under Bo Davis, somewhat of a question mark, I should say, as he only brought in one top 200 recruit at the defensive tackle position in the three years he spent at the University of Texas. That was Sadir Mitchell. But like I said, we've seen the development aspect 
of it already right in in great form with Coburn, Ozomo, Sweat and Murphy and in my opinion you would rather have the coach that can get those three stars and get them to play like five stars rather than the coach that can go out there and get those five stars that don't know what to do with them right and so um yes we can get better at the recruiting aspect but that does not mean that Bo Davis was a bad defensive line coach or that somebody who can recruit at a higher level then Bo Davis will be a better coach than he was at that position, right? Because at the end of the day, development is way more important than recruiting, especially in this era of college football where the five-star, you know, recruits, the blue chip recruits are getting more spread out than ever, you know, due to, you know, more parity in college football and NIL and the one-time transfer rule being a factor. So, you know, when you look at it, the D tackle room has a lot of question marks going into 2024, losing to Andre Sweat, Byron Murphy, and Trill Carter. And you have Alfred Collins, Vernon Broughton, Sadir Mitchell amongst, you know, some true freshmen in that room um, that signed to play with Bo Davis that are talented, but you would expect a big drop off, you know, losing two all Americans and two first team, all big 12 members. And you have to expect, and maybe an even bigger drop off now that Bo Davis has made the decision to go to LSU. So I know that, you know, all Texas fans main focus is what is Steve Sarkeesian going to do? Are we going to lock him in? Is he going to be the forever coach at the university of Texas and ignore the, you know, I guess waiting opportunity at the university of Alabama. But once we, you know, realize that Steve Sarkeesian is staying and he gets that long-term extension with a lot more money in his pocket, then our next priority should be finding a defensive line coach. Cause there's a huge void to fill there left by Bo Davis, who is now, the defensive line coach for the LSU Tigers. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked On Longhorns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hook them. Peace, Steve Sarkeesian. Please don't leave me.